Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard you can set up your core inputs or drivers for the model, review the core charts such as revenue breakdown, profitability, cash flow and cumulative cash flow. And also review the core financials, which is summary of your financials by years. So let's start from the core inputs. On the top left section you have up to 5 product types or groups. So all these yellow cells are changeable. So you can set up product A, product B or any other name you would like. The next step is to set up the launch date or start of production for each of these product types. You can use drop down and set any months within this five years model. The next step is to set up your production volume maximum monthly capacity in units. What does it mean? It means that in 2021 for product type one you can produce maximum 1000 units per month. Obviously you will not produce the maximum monthly capacity so there is a monthly capacity utilization percentage. This is by product types and by years. And for example, if you put here 80%, it means that for 2021, in average, you will produce 800 units per month instead of maximum 1000 units. So this percentage can grow over time, for example, 80, 82, 84, etc. And obviously, after you produce these uh, product types, you need to sell it. So in this step, you can set up the product sales price per unit. It can also be changeable by years and by product types. Finally, on the top, you can set up the inventory percentage because obviously you need some inventory to produce uh, these product types. So once you set up all these fixed expenses, variable expenses, COX, wages, capex and asset steps, you may review your core financials and core charts. I will explain a bit later about other tabs. On the seasonality tab, you can set up your capacity utilization seasonality assumptions across the months. So the dashboard previously set up the average capacity utilization by years and here you may just adjust it for different months across the year. So minus 10% means that, for example, if you have 50% of average capacity utilization across the year, you will multiply this 50% by 0 0.9 and you will have 45% of capacity utilization for the February and vice versa. If you have in July plus 10%, for example, so you will multiply your 50% by 1.1 and you will have 55% of capacity utilization for July. If you don't need any capacity utilization seasonality, you can just put zero across all the months and it will be flat across all the months of the year. Also on the dashboard you may set up your working capital assumptions. There are two main sections, which is accounts receivable and accounts payable. Accounts receivable applied to revenue and accounts payable applied to COX. You have up to four time frames to set up. From 0 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days and 90 to 120 days. So in total for each column there should be 100%. So if you set up 20, 20, and 20. The final time frame will show you the last part to have a total 100%, which is in this case 40%. Or it can be 50% first month, 50% second month, 0 and 0. So if you go to the balance sheet, you may see the accounts receivable calculation based on the AR revenue assumptions and accounts payable calculations based on COX accounts payable assumptions. income statement tab you may see your main components of your profit and loss which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, EBDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, 
net profit before tax, your corporate tax, and as a result, net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses, or for variable expenses, or for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement, you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in indirect method, operating, investing and financing activities, but in more collapsed form. Just easier to see the information here. And the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here broken down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet main KPIs broken down by five years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the five years and for 12 months for the selected year as well as charts with the same information. On the sources and users tab, you may see the main sources of cash and main uses of this cash. So on the top, you may see the funded structure, which is broken down by debts and equity amounts. And on the charts, you may see the actual breakdown. Also, you may see the jeering or debt to equity ratio here. The next report will show you the sources of funds broken down by different debts or grants and equity broken down by funders, series A, B and C. Just more detailed view of funding structure on the top. And finally, below we may see the report, which is very detailed view of sources of cash, which is revenue receipts, debts and equity and users broken down by COX, variable expenses, fixed expenses, salaries, debt repayments, interest repayments, corporate tax paid, capital expenditure and finally the cash in bank. Also you may change the amount of months which is one year, two, three, four and five years. So for example for the year five you may take a look on the sources and on the users. And below on the chart you may see this report in the graphical form, just more easier to review. On the financial chart step, you may see the main financial outputs in the graphical form. So on the left side, you may see the chart for the 24 months and on the right side, you may see the chart for the five years or 60 months. So the top couple of charts will show you the revenue breakdown by product types. The next couple of charts will show you the cash balance for the two years and for the five years. The next couple of charts will show you the operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow. The next couple of charts will show you the EBITDA breakdown, which is revenue, COX and OPEX. And finally, as a yellow line, you may see the resulting EBITDA value by months. And finally, on the last couple of charts in this tab, you may see the EBIT value by months. On the operational chart step, you may see the main operating outputs of the model, broken down by two sets of charts for 24 months from the left side and for the five years or 60 months from the right side. At the top, you may see the production volume in units for different product types, the next couple of charts will show you the productivity outputs, which is revenue per day and OPEX per day in average. And finally, on the last couple of charts, you may see the workforce productivity, which means that revenue per one employee and OPEX per one employee are done by two sets of charts for 24 months and for the five years. On the benchmarks KPI step, you may compare your financial outputs with your industry benchmarks. 
So you have five different benchmarks, which is gross margin, contribution margin, net profit, EBDA, salaries and wages as a percentage of revenue. So in these cells, you may see the values produced by the model after you set up all the drivers. And in these yellow cells, you can set up your industry benchmarks. For example, gross margin for your industry, for your particular country is 85%. So below you may see the same information in graphical form. As the orange columns you may see the industry values or industry benchmarks. And as a blue column you may see the values produced by the model. So you, you may compare it on the graphical form as well. On the top revenue tab you may see the absolute values of your revenue breakdown by product types and percentage breakdown. On the top you can see this in tabular form, you have 5 product types and 5 years and you can see the absolute values of your revenue. And on the right side you can see the percentage breakdown. Below you can see the same information in graphical form. So on the left side you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown by years. And on the right side you may see the charts with absolute values. A bit below you may see the revenue depths for the selected year. This year is also changeable, so you may review the revenue depths and monthly run rate for, for example, 2024. And finally, you may see the revenue breach between these two years, which are also changeable. So you can set up, for example, from 2022 to 2024, and you may see the main drivers of your revenue growth by different product types. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with the total below. And also to the right, you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below, you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses breach, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here, cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model, there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information, we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow, NPV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets 
means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report reporting. Additionally you have contents tab which allow you to navigate across the model very simple so you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does but if you want to know more you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on for example book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab you can input your headcount by categories with higher and higher date with annual salary with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO which is one headcount starting from March till the end of the model which is December 24. Also you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus which is 10% and 5% of monthly ta taxes related to the payroll. Another option would be admin account which will start in April which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number 1, 2, then 4, 6, 8 and 10 headcounts. 3% of annual salary grows, 5% of monthly bonus and 5% of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers which is 2 for the year number 1. 2020, starting from year 2021, you have 4, then 6, 8, and 10 in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for these two, in this case 4, that counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages. And here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these headcounts. On the COX tab you may set up the main components of your cost of goods sold for each of product types. We have two sections or two approaches. We can set up up to 10 line items for COX as a percentage of revenue and 10 line items for COX as a dollars per unit. So you can change the names, for example, packaging or any other name you would like to use. So you can set up for this line item, for example, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it will be calculated as a percentage of revenue. And other option is to set up as a dollar per unit. So this means that you have 100 of units produced and ten dollars so you will just multiply count of units produced by dollars per unit. Below you may see the calculation of cox for each of product types 
and finally in income statement. For the variable expenses tab, you may set up up to six categories of your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue. So on the left side you may see the names of your variable expenses line items, so you can type in any name if you would like. And on the right side you may see the variable expenses assumptions. So 10% means that for warehouse expenses in 2021 you will pay 10% of your total revenue. So it can grow over the time, for example 12%, 14%, 16%, 18%. Or you can decrease this percentage over the time, 9, 8, 7, 6. Below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses. And finally, income statement under the variable expenses category, you may see the line items and monthly values for your variable expenses. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, you have utilities, you will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also, you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis. With amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B weekly payments within the month. Five hundred dollars multiplied by two, you have one thousand dollars per month. Again, you can input some growth rate, and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August twenty-four, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option: office setup. which can be one-time payment, which will happen in February 20, with amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20 with this amount. Another option, insurance. Let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model, and it can happen monthly with $1,000 per month, with 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third, and 1% in year number four. So you may see this calculation here. Starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50. And starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option quarterly, you may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually, in this case you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments, you will pay one time per 12 months. 
starting from February till December 24. For each expense type you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also in income statement you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. On the CapEx tab, you may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of examples. So, for example, office development with purchase date of February 20 with spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development. And you will have some balance of CapEx accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example, other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 with zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find in Assets tab. By default it has useful time for five years for the calculation of depreciation. You may find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may also find capital expenditure and closing net book value. Additionally, you have up to six placeholders for other assets, for example, other assets with useful time of 10 years with cost of $25,000 and with launch date in April. You may find it in here, you can see capital expenditure. You may see book depreciation by months for these amounts and you may see closing net book value. The total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement. On the cash flow you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets and on the balance sheet you may find fixed assets amount under non-current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well. the capitalization table you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding with different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. So total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000, for founder number two, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder one is $20,000, for founder two is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May, cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $16,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input 
some amounts for series B and series C. The same way you can set up the date, cost of share and up to five investors is up to five placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt you are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input some amount of the debt, the launch date, term will be 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it no repayments no terms in terms of interest so all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab calculations for the debt number one debt number two debt number three total debts with grants these calculations impacts income statement interest expenses the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments and on the balance sheet you have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have euro as an output. And for this case, you can set up currency exchange rate. This is 1.2, for example. In this case, you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars, all your outputs in euros, and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs. Additionally, you have denomination, which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example, you have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000 you can select millions you may see that now it is in million dollars you can set also billions or without any denomination additionally you have corporate tax setup you can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement I hope you enjoyed my video Thanks for reviewing this and uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.